Hi everyone and welcome back to Kimbo's Comfort Kitchen. Today we're going to do one of my favorite Danish dishes from my childhood. My grandmother used to make a fabulous appetizer called uh, tarleta. Now tarleta, which is basically just tart, um, is traditionally is made with a shoe pastry. And for all my Danish friends out there, don't go freaking crazy on me. I'm not doing it with a shoe pastry. I'm going to cho I've chosen to move it over to a vaudevant. I go to the local grocery store, I buy them frozen, and I bake them in the oven, which I'm going to show you what we do, how we do that. Then I make the filling. Not very complicated, pretty easy to put together. But more importantly, you control your kitchen on this dish. Like so many others that I talk about, you have the timing in the palm of your hand. Now, when you make this sauce, you can take it in the filling. You can take it and put it aside and freeze it, or you can just leave it aside and warm it up when your guests arrive. Same thing with the pastries. Make the pastry a little bit ahead of time and warm it up so it all comes together at the last minute. I guarantee your guests are going to be super impressed. They're going to go, wow, and they're going to think you spent hours over the stove on this dish. All right, so let's get started, and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so let's talk about what pastry we're going to use. Now, if you live near a Danish deli, you can get uh, tarleta already made in a pack. They're like this. I'm not a big fan, quite frankly. Um, I grew up with homemade uh, tarleta shells, which are made with shoe pastry. But to be honest, uh, for the amount of work that it requires uh, for fresh ones, and these as a substitute are okay if you have to, but way better, which would be my take on it, is I use the Vaudevant pastries. I use this one particular one because it's easy to get. And I simply put them on a tray like this. I'm going to put them in my oven for about 18 minutes at 400 degrees. And um, I'll show you what they look like in about uh, two seconds. Okay, so here we are 18 minutes later in my little oven. And we did it for uh, at 400 degrees. Now you can see on the bottom left, I've taken the cap off with a paring knife, but I haven't taken out the inside. And then on this one here, you can see I've scooped out this stuff down to the bottom. And this will keep until I'm ready for the rest of the sauce that goes into the tarleta, which I'll warm up at the last minute, just uh, at about 350 for a few minutes just before serving. Okay, and we'll be right back. Okay, so let's get to the fun part. We're going to get to talk about the ingredients here. So to start with, I'm using the Danish fiskebora, Icelandisk from Iceland. Um, and before you make any smart remarks about fish balls, no, they're just cod pressed meat, and then I cut them into halves like that. And then I've got some beautiful hand peeled shrimp. I've got some white asparagus, which I've taken out of a jar. Um, I like to use the jar. There's the pros and cons with that. One is that they're kind of soft, so you gotta be very careful with them, but the flavor and the texture overall is better than using fresh white asparagus. I find that it takes too much time. You gotta peel them, blah, 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 and blanch them and everything else and get it just right. So this is my shortcut. Next, we have the flour and the butter and to make our roux. And then I've reserved all the juice from the asparagus and from the fiskebola uh, to use to make my white sauce. And of course, some milk. I don't use cream. I don't need it in this particular one. The roux will more than suffice uh, to keep that nice and thick and creamy. So that's it. Not that complicated. And next step is I'm going to show you how we're going to put this all together. So hang on. All right, let's put all the ingredients together. So let's start with the roux. I'm preheating my pan right now. And as soon as the little bit of water is gone from there, I know it's time for me to add the flour. Now, I know a lot of people would add butter first. But old-fashioned method of making roux was to add flour and let it cook a little bit in the pan. And once that has happened, it gets rid of the floury, excess floury taste when you're making your roux for your sauces. And we're almost there. I've got the oven set to uh, three-quarter temp on my little electric stove, my easy bake oven as I call it. Now I'm just sprinkling the flour. Some people might sift it. I don't really feel it's necessary for this. It'll all come out in the end anyway. 
And I'm just going to let this flour warm up a bit in the pan. Give it a quick flip. I don't want this to go dark. I don't want to actually cook it through. So, I'm going to add the butter very gracefully. And as soon as the butter is incorporated, melted, and we should have this lovely paste or roux. Putting in the reserve, some of it anyway, for now. Add some milk. Mmm, doesn't that look yummy? Now at some point in time normally you would add, when you're making a white sauce, you would start to add uh, salt. But given that we have the cod balls and the shrimp, I'm going to wait until the last moment to see whether or not it's actually necessary. Because the reserve water has a fair bit of salt in it already. Now you can see this velvety texture coming through. And I don't want it to be quite this thick at this point, but I'm not going to add any, well, I'm gonna add just a little bit more water right now, but I wanna hold it, hold back or reserve because when I add the asparagus and I add the shrimp and I add the cod balls, it will also release water. And I don't want this to be too thin. I'm gonna put the cod balls in first. Because they're the most durable in texture. And I'll let that impart some flavor. And we're gonna let that sit for a bit. Now I'm going to add the shrimp. Finally, I'm going to add the white asparagus. And as I said, they're quite delicate, so I don't want to really handle them that much or they have a tendency to fall apart. But I'm also going to add some white pepper. Which I didn't mention before because I've forgotten. But it's in the recipe. And now we're going to fold that in. You can see how much extra water is there from the asparagus, but that's fine. It should work out just perfect. And now we just fold it. And the rest is just patience because now I'm going to let this sit for about five minutes. And the next section will just be plating. So I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay. Okay. So now we're ready to plate. So remember, it's all about you having control. So what I've done is I heated this in the microwave. This is from the first batch that I made. And this is now chilled. But now I've transferred this, put it in the microwave. Now if you were going to do the large batch, what I would do is put that on a pot on a slow simmer to heat the whole thing up at once. But seeing as I'm only just making two for us today, you can see how it steams. I've taken these out of the oven Okay, they're warm, they're fresh, they're ready to go. And I'm going to plate these in, there we go. 
It's really a simple dish. Doesn't that look pretty? And we just put some parsley for garnish. Over the top, and there you have Danish tadletta made with a volavon. So, so at the t this is the deal. At the end of the day, you've controlled how f quickly you can make this. You can also use other types of fillings. You can use it with chicken and asparagus. You don't need to use the fish balls and the shrimp. Um, I'll put on additions onto the on my website to, for other fillings for you. But this is the basic um, composition for it. So whether it's for two or for six or twenty, this works. I hope you enjoy and come and visit me at Kimbo's Comfort Kitchen for more recipes. Thank you very much.